Welcome everybody to our online service for Palm Sunday and as well as this service there's also a service of Holy Communion taking place today in St Mary's Bures at 10.30 a.m. And just a little reminder of what's going on this week as we follow the journey of Jesus to the suffering of the cross and to the joy and triumph of Easter Day. Each day this week, one of the ministry team will be offering a short reflection on our YouTube channel. And then on Thursday, we'll be holding a short service via Zoom to mark Maundy Thursday. On Good Friday, there will be an online service for families, followed by a service of contemplation in St Mary's Church in the afternoon. And then on Easter Day itself, we'll be celebrating with an Easter communion service in all three churches in the Benefice. Little Cornard at 8am and 10.30am at Bures and at Assington. There'll also be an online service for Easter Day for those who may not be able to join us in person. But now let's begin this service with a prayer. Heavenly Father, as we remember this day how Jesus entered Jerusalem to cries of celebration, help us to welcome him afresh into our own hearts and lives. Accept the praise and worship we bring to you now and give us a real sense of expectation as we look towards his coming kingdom. Amen. Well, in just a moment, uh, Carolyn will read us Mark's account of Jesus' triumphal entry into Jerusalem. But her, first we hear the cry of the crowd in our first song, Hosanna. <laughs> Generation 
taken from Mark chapter 11. Jesus comes to Jerusalem as king. As they approached Jerusalem and came to Bethphage and Bethany at the Mount of Olives, Jesus sent two of his disciples saying to them, go to the village ahead of you and just as you enter it you will find a colt tied there which no one has ever ridden. Untie it and bring it here. If anyone asks you why are you doing this, say the Lord needs it and will send it back here shortly. They went and found a colt outside in the street, tied at a doorway. As they untied it, some people standing there asked, What are you doing untying that colt? They answered as Jesus had told them to, and the people let them go. When they brought the colt to Jesus and threw their cloaks over it, he sat on it. Many people spread their cloaks on the road, while others spread branches they'd cut in the fields. Those who went ahead and those who followed shouted, Hosanna! Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Blessed is the coming kingdom of our father David. Hosanna in the highest heaven. Jesus entered Jerusalem and went into the temple courts. He looked around at everything, but since it was already late, he went out to Bethany with the twelve. Today's story of Jesus coming into Jerusalem just before the Passover festival is often called the Triumphal Entry. It's Passover time, the symbolic freedom time for the Jewish people. But more than that, for Jesus' followers, this was also kingdom time, the time when God's sovereign and saving presence would be revealed in some as yet unknown way through their leader. After all, you don't spread cloaks on the road, especially in the dusty, stony Middle East, just for a friend or a family member. No, you do it for royalty. And you don't cut off tree branches or foliage from the fields just because you want to party. You do it because you're welcoming a king. But I think that to truly understand the triumph of this day, we have to wind the clock back, away from the colt on the Mount of Olives. Because I think the triumphal entry really begins at the beginning of the Gospel with Mary saying, let it be. With those words, she opens herself, the world and all of humanity to God entering human life in history in a physical, tangible and very personal way. If we think the triumphal entry is simply Jesus riding a colt from the Mount of Olives to Jerusalem, maybe we'll miss the real good news of this day. The triumphal entry, I think, is bigger than that. It's happening in every place and moment of our lives. God's entry into human life and history is the triumphal entry. Jesus' life itself is the triumphal entry. Jesus' movement from Mary's womb to Bethlehem's manger is the triumphal entry. Every point where Jesus' life and ministry intersects with the reality of our lives becomes a point of triumphal entry. The triumphal entry is Jesus bringing good news to the poor, healing the brokenhearted, giving sight to the blind, release to the captive, letting the oppressed go free. The triumphal entry is Jesus including the outcast, setting a place at the banquet for the unacceptable, forgiving sinners, loving the enemy, giving life to the dead. 
everywhere he goes, he reveals new life, new hope, new possibilities. And he does all this by offering himself all that he is and all that he has. There were lots of people that day taking their cloaks off to Jesus, but in a sense, he has already taken off his cloak, the cloak of his divinity, off for them and for us. In one of the Bible readings set for today, Paul writes this to the new church in Philippi. Let the same mind be in you that was in Christ Jesus, who, although he was in the form of God, did not regard equality with God as something to be exploited, but emptied himself, taking the form of a slave, being born in human likeness. He humbled himself and became obedient to the point of death, even death on a cross. Jesus takes off his cloak, throws it down and makes himself vulnerable. He holds nothing back. Jesus redefines triumph through the life he lived and the death he offered. Where triumph for us might look like escaping vulnerability, risk and suffering, triumph for Jesus means entering into and embracing vulnerability, risk and suffering. He enters the very places we would avoid and reveals God's transformative presence, healing, life and love. So there's a lot about cloaks going on in this story. And that made me think about cloaks and what they do. Cloaks keep us warm and protected. They stop us being vulnerable. They also hide a lot. I think of the villains you often get in Victorian melodramas, shrouded in mystery in a cloak. I think about the invisibility cloak in the Harry Potter stories, the ultimate in protection from vulnerability. And I think of professional boxers, full of hubris and super confidence as they enter the ring wrapped cloaked in their dressing gown, only to appear all too humanly vulnerable when the gown comes off and the bell rings. Then there's us and the cloaks that we wear. I guess many of us will have felt especially vulnerable uh, in all sorts of ways this last year. But most of us, I suspect, will have kept those feelings to ourselves and just managed as best we can. But I think that by the triumphal entry of Jesus into the world, sharing our anxieties, sadness and loss, he invites us to take off and throw down our cloaks that we wear and be vulnerable in our need with him and with each other. To the extent that we cloak, cover up and hide our vulnerabilities, the tender, broken or painful places of our lives, we deny the triumphal entry. We've all at some time cloaked our lives in something, whether it be fear, anger, guilt, regret, control and power, sorrow, perfectionism, prejudice, pride, the need for others' approval, each one of us could definitely add to that list a particular cloak that we wear. Most of us probably wear more than one cloak. But every cloak that we wear separates us from God in some way, from ourselves, from each other. Of course, Laying our cloaks down, being vulnerable with God and each other is not an easy thing. It takes a lot of faith and trust in the other. I'm sure we can all think of times when we've been open and vulnerable with somebody, only to find that that precious thing we've entrusted them with, that part of ourselves, has been misused. But we know that God in Jesus made himself open and vulnerable in coming to us, and he invites us to do the same. 
Let the same mind be in you that was in Christ Jesus, says Paul. Cast aside the cloaks that you cling to for security. Enter instead the places of vulnerability and risk where God asks you to be for the sake of his kingdom and for the lives of others. So perhaps the real triumph of Palm Sunday isn't about waving our palms for Jesus. Perhaps it isn't about Jesus riding into Jerusalem. Maybe the real triumph of Palm Sunday is when we throw our cloaks down before Jesus. Maybe there's a case for renaming it Cloak Sunday. Those cloaks are the path of Jesus' triumphal entry into our lives. The triumph of Palm Sunday, Cloak Sunday, is when we stand absolutely naked, vulnerable and exposed to the triumphal entry of God's life and love into our lives. I wonder which it will be then for us today. As Jesus draws alongside us on his way to the cross, will we only be waving palms, making a lot of noise as we see him pass, and then returning to the lives we have carefully wrapped up for ourselves? Or will we be casting our cloaks before him, offering ourselves as he offered himself, holding nothing back, opening our lives to his triumphal entry? Which will it be for each of us? Waving palms or casting cloaks? Now Angela will lead us in prayer, after which our second hymn, Ride On, Ride On in Majesty, takes us with Jesus on his journey to the cross. When I thought about these prayers, I was reminded of the song that we're going to sing next. Ride on, ride on in majesty. And how Jesus continued to ride on, even beyond everybody celebrating him. So let us pray. Ride on, ride on in majesty. Lord Jesus, you rode on through shouts of joy and jubilation as the crowds announced your triumphal entry into the city. Please fill this, your church, with these praises. Keep us, your people, steadfast and faithful and full of love for you and your purposes. Ride on, ride on in majesty. Lord Jesus, you, ri you rode on through shouts of anger and hatred. These echoed all around as the crowds called for your death. Strengthen us when we encounter injustice and hatred. May we ride on when we hear rumours meant to hurt, prejudice meant to wound, abuse meant to destroy. May we be assured that nothing can separate us and those for whom we pray from your unending love. Ride on, ride on in majesty. Lord Jesus, you rode on, trusting in the dedicated allegiance of your disciples. You rode on when their fidelity was tested. You rode on when you were betrayed and deceived. Show us how to put aside our fears, our pride and our selfishness, so that we may be dependable and faithful when you call us to follow you. Help us to put others above ourselves, to forgive, to love, to serve and to teach. Help us not to count the cost when you ask us to go to places that bring us fear. Ride on, ride on in majesty. Lord Jesus, you rode on towards the cross full of anguish and terror. 
When we stare into the place of darkness, please shine your light of hope into our hearts and lift us from our feelings of despair. Be alongside us when we weep and when we face emptiness. May we know deep in our hearts that you are by our side, that your presence will sustain us and that you will be with all those who are ill, suffering or losing people. Ride on, ride on in majesty. Lord Jesus, you ride on through the streets of this world, bringing hope and dignity to the remotest of corners. May we be your instruments and have the courage to daily ride on in your name. May we bring comfort, may we bring healing and power to all those we encounter. May we be used to bind up the brokenhearted, to bandage the wounded, to defend the oppressed and to give solace to the bereaved. Ride on, ride on in majesty. May we throw our cloaks at your feet, being willing to share your vulnerability as you triumphantly enter into our lives. May we journey with you to bring hope to your world and to build your kingdom here on earth. Lord, we pray all these things in the name of our dear Saviour, Jesus Christ. Amen. Standing with our cloaks at Jesus' feet, we pray together the Lord's Prayer. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done, on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins, as we forgive those who sin against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen.
Thank you everyone for joining us today. I pray that we might catch a new sense of God's great love for us and his world this week as we approach Easter and that his presence will be a real blessing and a comfort to us. But let's end now with a blessing. May the Father who so loved the world that he gave his only Son bring you by faith to his eternal life. May Christ, who accepted the cup of sacrifice in obedience to the Father's will, keep you steadfast as you walk with him in the way of the cross. May the Spirit, who empowers and strengthens us that we may share Christ's glory, set your minds on life and peace. And the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son and the Holy Spirit be amongst you and remain with you always. Amen.